Back to an instant reaction edition of the Night Report podcast. I'm your co-host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me is Rutgers beat writer, Chris Nolaski. Chris, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights football team added a key piece to the 2023 roster. They picked up a wide receiver commitment last night from Jaquay Jackson. Uh, he's a D2 All-American. He went to University of California, Pennsylvania. Uh, he's got one year of eligibility left. We'll kind of get into his game a little bit uh, after we just kind of High level, how big of a commitment is this for Rutgers and how does this kind of change the outlook for the season for Rutgers? Yeah, so if you if you remember a couple of weeks ago, uh, right before the spring game, Shannon went, uh, Greg Shannon went on BTN and he was talking about needing and wanting to add wide receivers from the transfer portal. And, you know, he specifically mentioned one, maybe two. So this is the first one so far. And that yep. wasn't even counting uh, Nassim Brantley, who they got prior to the spring. Um, so now you bring in Jackson, and as as we all know, Rutgers needs wide receivers, right? So they sure do. Yep. Get, <laughs> so getting somebody like Jackson is obviously going to help help a ton. Um, you don't know how he's going to transition going from D two to D one, but he 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 dominated D two, and that's what you really want to see when you bring a guy in from um, you know a, a lower level, I guess. And you, you don't really know how um, you know he kind of slipped through the, through the cracks there coming into high school. Um, so he's obviously tall. He's like 6'3", maybe almost 200 pounds. Um, he had over 1,000 yards, you know, over 70 catches. Like, he, he really dominated uh, for his team there. He spent, uh, I think, like at least five years there. So he's he's an older guy, too. And um, if you look at the Rutgers roster, there's a lot of young guys at receiver. So even if, he's, even if you know, Jackson's new and he's going to be new to the Big Ten and D1, he's still an older player who can kind of – help the younger guys still in in a way. So um, I think just bringing, in, bringing him in is going to be big for Rutgers. Um, they need a passing game. They need you know, receivers to catch the ball. And um, I think I think he'll fill in nicely. Obviously, you know, they have a lot of, I guess, um, quote, unquote, you know, maybe smaller or short, short receivers. And, you know, other than maybe Isaiah Washington. So, um, you know, Jackson, he's 6'3". He's going to help in that regards too. And, um, yeah, I mean, I know we talked about too with the quarterbacks maybe being inaccurate. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how much you know being six three helps, um, but it should maybe help a little bit in terms of getting the accuracy numbers up too. Yeah, and if you take a look at who else we've taken in the portal at wide receiver, Jasim Brantley is also a big bodied receiver. I believe he's listed also at six three, six mm -hmm. you know, six two two oh five is what mm -hmm. was listed at, at Ruck, on Rutgers um, and. Jaquay Jackson is listed at 6'3", 175. Um, he's originally from Western PA. Uh, he's originally from Pittsburgh, PA, to be exact. He went to mm -hmm. Sarah Catholic. Um, he entered the portal on March 24th, and he picked up a pretty extensive offer list. I'm just going to run through them real quick because mm -hmm. it's quite a few. He got an offer from Charlotte, Georgia Tech, Colorado, Cincinnati, Middle Tennessee State, Western Kentucky, Arkansas State, University of Louisiana Monroe, Liberty, Georgia State, Temple, South Florida, McNeese State, West Virginia, NC State, Pitt, Miami, Texas a and Michigan State. So you kind of see the gradient of smaller schools to bigger schools on that offer list. Uh, so there was clearly an increase in big school attention the longer he was in the portal. Uh, he actually took an official visit to Rutgers at the beginning of April. Uh, and that started a long uh, list of, of visits he took. So he visited mm -hmm. Rutgers first. And then he visited Miami, he visited Texas A&M, he visited Colorado, and he visited Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Now, he took all these visits, and he was done taking visits by the end of April. And he didn't commit until today, um, or last night, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So he had legit offers from all these schools. I do wonder uh, what the, the waiting for him was, why that took place. Uh, we can kind of discuss that a little deeper in a few, but he he's a guy, when you watch him on tape, it's tough because it's D2, but mm -hmm. he is just blowing past everybody. Like, he catches a lot of slants, a lot of, like, deep routes, and he's just gone. He's creating a lot of easy separation. Um, and he had a really good season last season. So he had, I believe you said, 77 catches, almost 1,200 yards receiving, and 15 touchdowns, and he was a D2 All-American. Yeah. So this is a kid who can play. And now you want to see guys who dominate at a lower level if you're going to yeah. take a chance on them at a higher level. So that's not to say he will dominate at, you know, 
at the Big Ten level, but he should be able to hold his own. Uh, this is also a kid who had worked out for NFL scouts. I guess that you can do that uh, if they're on your campus. So mm-hmm. he ran a, apparently a four four one at his junior day, and he was you know he took a picture hanging out with the the giant scout and the, <laughs> the eagle scout who were there at the time. Um, so long story short, this is a kid who had the the pedigree in terms of offers. He had the production at a lower level, and he's got the size. He's got the speed. So this is a guy you definitely want to take a chance on um, because he could end up being a very useful piece. I don't see why how he's not the wide receiver one next year. Do you agree with that? Do you see him as the, the wide receiver one on the team? Yeah, I think I think he comes right in and makes an impact. Um, maybe, maybe he starts off a little bit slowly in training camp, but I think, you know, as he gets comfortable and maybe as the season go, go, goes along, I think he really has a chance to, to do really well. Um, and, and also, he's being coached by – veteran coaches like like Dave yeah. Brock has coached NFL wide receivers you know yeah. Kirk Sharaka has been around for a long time he's coached a lot of football um yep. so I I think I think I, I think I wrote about that back in January having you know obviously Shano knows his team is, is is a development program and I think he feels these coaches can really help these guys develop and you know once Jackson I mean I don't really know what kind of coaches Jackson had um at his previous stop but now he's getting um, to to be taught by really good coaches who I think would really help him, and um and and like you said, he's tall, he's he has speed, um he's he's athletic. Um, I think he's gonna help Rutgers from day one, and that's what really Rutgers needs, right? I mean, you come in as a graduate transfer for one year, you really want to make an impact, and yeah, um, this, this this just adds to a couple, you know, Rutgers has added a lot of transfer wide receivers in the past that that have worked out too. So you hope that. Jackson and then also Brantley, who'll be here for the summer, or he was here for the spring, but he was he was hurt a little bit. Um, you hope that those two guys can really come to the forefront and uh, show the guys the ropes and really make a an, an, an impact like they brought him here for. So um, yeah, I, I think I think I think you you hit the nail on the head. I think Rutgers um, is really hoping that Jackson does well, and I, I think he will. I think he has the skill set. Um, we'll just see how he gets adjusted to everything and. Um, if all goes smoothly, I think it will be uh, a really good pickup for sure. Yeah, and it's easy to point to, you know, Dave Brock was Julio Jones' wide receiver coach. He was, uh, yeah. you know, uh, Calvin Ridley's wide receiver coach when mm-hmm. he had that big breakout year. He was Mohamed Sanu's wide receiver coach. So I'm sure that Mohamed Sanu has that unique uh, perspective. And I'm not sure if he's talked to anybody on the team, but he has that unique perspective of playing for Shiano. Mm-hmm. Playing for you know Dave Brock in the, the the next level and kind of marrying those two ideas together, um, I do have some intel from Richie as to kind of the background of the commitment. Uh, he said, "Long story short, he took a visit to Rutgers in early J- April, like we outlined already. He really liked the campus and he really liked the coaching staff. Uh, he took additional visits, mm-hmm. uh, but at the end of the day, his goal, his number one goal, is to make the NFL." And he felt Shiano's ties to the NFL and Dave Brock being an NFL, previously an NFL wide receivers coach, gave him the best shot of getting to the NFL. Plus, it doesn't hurt that he's immediately the wide receiver one and a bunch of the other schools, you wouldn't have that opportunity. And also a bunch of those other schools kind of maybe filled up in between the time of him taking the visit and now. Um, But still, I, I think this is a much better than expected pickup this late in the process. Uh, this is the kind of kid who I would have been pounding the table for uh, mm-hmm. if he entered the portal in November or December, because these are kind of, you, you have to take chances when you're Rutgers, when you're, when you're a team that isn't purely driven by NIL, like some other uh, colleges out there, when you're a team that isn't going to have a chance even at some of the the second tier guys in the portal until they start having more success. You need to take some chances. I felt that this was a really good player to take a chance with in terms of his skill set. Um, because they there's some guys who at the lower levels I thought they should recruit, but I guess their size profile wasn't really fitting in to what they were looking for. Like uh, Naeem Simmons, who was a kid who was on Wagner, who had a really good game against Rutgers. Uh, he entered the portal this past uh, off season, and he ended up uh, committing to South Florida. So he's now a wide receiver at South Florida. He had two years of eligibility. He was a New Jersey guy. He really wanted to be here. But I thought, you know, I thought they should probably take guys at lower levels because those are the kind of guys that, you know, have something to prove. They have a chip on their shoulder. They want to test their 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 skills at the next level. 
and that's kind of what Rutgers is getting in Jaquay Jackson. Um, yeah. Do you think that this now makes it, because now we have a pretty decent wide receiver group. I don't think it's as good as last year. I think last year was Sean Ryan, Aaron Crookshank, and Shamid Jones. I, I think those three guys, just the amount of time they spent at Rutgers. I mean, obviously, Sean Ryan was only here for a year, mm -hmm. but the other two were here for, you know, Shamid Jones was here for his whole career. Aaron Crookshank was here for three years. Um, I do think that this is a comparable level of talent at wide receiver. Uh, between <laughs> between Jaquay Jackson, Seam Brantley, and Chris Long, uh, do you do you think that Rutgers' passing offense could take potentially a step, a big step forward this year, given that the quarterbacks are a year older, new system that's supposed to be a little easier to to mm -hmm. to translate onto the field, and also these additional wide receivers they've added? Yeah, I th I think there's there's a good chance at the very least that it could be it could be improved from last year. Um, you, like I mentioned before, you have better coaches now. Um, you have guys that are more experienced uh, on the team. They're kind of maybe developed in the in the off season. Um, yeah, I think I think I think honestly, this it could be. It, it might be kind of weird to say, but yeah, it could it could end up being better. I mean, Isaiah Washington is maybe kind of comparable to Samian Jones, who you know we kind of talk about um, maybe kind of, you know, waiting for that one breakout year. And, you know, maybe, maybe this is the year, maybe, you know, he's finally getting a chance to kind of see see the field more. Um, you got someone like Chris Long, who was really good in high school. Um, I caught cover him in high school. I remember writing an article about him. Um, and then, you know, he was obviously a little banged up this spring, but, um, he should be good to go for training camp. And he was, he was a really good wide receiver in high school. He played, uh, he played, he flashed a little bit last year. Obviously he played corner his first year. Um, but then you got you know someone like Rashad Rochelle, who everyone is really is really high on. Um, he's a he's a quick, athletic guy. Um, but really, and you know, can't forget about Christian Dremel. I know I know nobody wants to talk about Christian Dremel, <laughs> but 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 he won the um, uh, what's it called the offensive uh, most improved offensive award. You know, in in, in uh, spring in spring uh, spring practice. Um, I actually have in the war room uh, for Friday. Uh, you know, Gavin Wimsat was really excited for him to get that award, and he's really put in the work. Um, in the off season in the spring, so he was really glad to see that. And you know, he said that um, he wouldn't pick anybody else for you know for the award. Um, and then uh, you know Nassim Brantley was really good. You know his previous stop, maybe you know he adds another uh, weapon. Um, so yeah, I think just overall, I think the wide receiver room is maybe comparable uh, for sure. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe maybe Jackson ends up being better than Sean Ryan. Sean Ryan was Rutgers' uh, best receiver last year. They both kind of have the same build really, and um, it'll be interesting to see how they do, and I know I know you and Richie uh, mentioned the NFL kind of aspirations. Um, you know, obviously Dave Brock coached in the NFL, like we said, Chiano coached in the, in the NFL. Um, there's a bunch of coaches with ties now, and um, who knows? I mean, NFL really finds everybody and anybody in all stops, but um, obviously being one of the top receivers in a, on a Big Ten team now, going up. You know, you know, being on TV every day, having that, you know, easy, easy film access, um, I think is going to really bode well for him. And obviously, that's one of the reasons why you just mentioned he he came, he came to Rutgers. So um, I think it's a I think it's a win win. Um, so I guess we'll just see how everything plays out in the field. But on on paper, um, he definitely makes Rutgers better. And um, as as we all know, Rutgers Rutgers I, I do want to mention too, Rutgers Rutgers wants to run the ball, right? That that's what they want to do. They brought in, you know, Kirk Kirk Schrocka wants to run the ball. Um, they have like six run backs or whatever that like can run the ball and can be effective out of the backfield. Um, it'll just be up to the quarterbacks making improvements, the wide receivers making improvements, and now the offensive line see what they can do and you know make improvements under, you know, arguably one of the best offensive line coaches in Pat Flyer. So um, this I, I would say it has potential to be a really good offense, but um, everything just has to come come together and. Um, who knows? I mean, you know, adding, adding Jackson can only, can only help in that regard. So, yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to see him on the field and uh, see how he looks in practice uh, this summer. But we kind of covered a lot of the different the different angles on this one. Is there anything else you wanted to bring up before we we head out? I don't don't think so. I just think uh, you know, is I th I think I think just just keep keep looking at the transfer portal. I think you know, Shiano said he wanted to bring in one or two more. Uh, maybe there's another name out there that um, will be in the fold soon. Um, obviously, the off, off season is still is still young, um, so just stay tuned for that report. Uh, you know, for more. 
Yeah, that's a, a great point. I don't think we're done. And uh, I think we should expect at least one more transfer portal guy, uh, at least one offensive lineman, I would assume, and maybe another yeah, that's pass that's catcher. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for me and Chris, this has been another edition of the Night Report podcast. Signing off.